Picture that in real life. Now I make believe and I do what I like. Yeah. Tell a nigga coming for a real one on a hammer and I ain't giving up. I ain't playing for real though. One of the first to co venture with a major label. I'm with the business. It's a bad one in the building. Bad girl dropping. Brown skin and winning. Pick it up. Get it moving. Turn it up. Turn it up. Get it in. Get it cracking way up. Yeah. Turn, turn it up. up. Turn it up. Get your bag up. Time to get it jumping if you with the beat. Come on. Step. Get. Swing. Get. Put your fist up if you know what it is. But you can't do it like me. Nah. <laughs> yeah, turn it up. Turn it up. Way up. Let's get it. Way yeah. up. Champion, she, she already, already did, did it. it. First generation of rapper. Anybody ever tell you you look just like Sugar T? You're kidding me. Uh -huh. People tell me that. <laughs> can't wait to meet her. <laughs> How you doing? It's a pleasure to have you. How you doing? I'm good. Thank we you. finally got together. Yeah. Some years of building online, trying to figure out a way. We did it. How you been? I've uh, been great. Yeah. How did last night's show go? It was cool. I was able to highlight a magazine. They put me on the front cover called The Business okay. Magazine. Speak up just a little bit. I was on the, um, on the, on the, thank you, The Business Magazine. They highlighted me on their cover. Right. For, the, um, for this segment, and um, so I performed and hung out, you know, and Tell me more about out. the magazine. The magazine is cool. It, it highlights, you know, it's called The Business Magazine, and it highlights, um, well, the biggest thing is from a young lady who's out here from the Bay. Mm -hmm. um, her name is Olivia. Well, she calls herself Olivia, but um, she is, you know, inspiring young lady who's pushing to highlight fashion and health and music and politics mm -hmm. and so um, she thought I would be the per perfect person with a well-rounded uh, multi-faceted aspect of business and life um, to be highlighted so she gave me a nice little spread in okay. here okay um, the spread is pretty cool so anybody want to learn a little bit more about me they can go get this magazine remember it's called the business magazine and Spread is really nice how they got you get to learn a little bit more about me as well. You get a taste of the woman behind the lyrics. So it's a page that highlights that. It highlights somewhat of my enterprise experience. As you know, I'm a mobile maker. Okay. And um, and of course brands that I've created of my own as well as you know brands, some brands that I create for others. And then of course it highlights my catalog. Of all wow. of the albums wow. um, that I released thus far. How many albums do you got to your name? As I continue to release them. Uh, at this point, it's 22 of solo albums, and then there's um, five group albums. Okay. How has hip hop treated you, Sugar? Has it been good to you? Recently or in the past? Past and present, because you're still here. It has to be. It has to been treating you some type of way. You pull up in a nice, fine car today, so. <laughs> well, you know, to be honest with you, um, I can't necessarily say that hip hop is what treats me. Mm -hmm. um, it's a part of the treatment, but it's many other facets of life that has treated me uh, well. Because if I depended on hip hop, I'd be in a nut house. <laughs> okay. you want me to be real? <laughs> right. You know. in, 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 in past conversations we had, you told me that you at times you felt unappreciated. I remember um, they had a top female MCs list mm -hmm. some years. I believe that's when I, that's how I met you yeah. about posting that top <laughs> MCs list. At times you felt that you know you weren't acknowledged correctly. Tell me how you feel about that whole situation when when they when they start to acknowledge the female MCs and your name doesn't come up all the time. Right. You know what? Um, what's interesting is. There's uh, so many politics with this game and so much, there's so much ignorance as well that comes with it. You know, people are so used to information coming through one source and they're so used to digging into one source. Sometimes some of us might appear to get lost in the matrix. Okay. And so um, I think a lot of that comes from ignorance where they don't highlight all of us. And then of course the mindset has changed so much to whereas people are so into hype brands, they've gotten so, you know, programmed mm -hmm. to like these 
gimmicks and images and agendas that's just constantly flooding through the airways, which are much quicker through broadcast system now, through right. the internet and as you know, social media and all the different elements, to whereas they forget about the foundation and of the many, many others that are out there that's still capable, still relevant, that basically created and carved the pavement for what they're doing today. And in the midst of myself, right. um, I think that confusion comes. And because of that ignorance and that confusion, and some possibly politics, you know what I mean? Um, you know, it does appear sometimes that they leave me off those lists, you know. And I think the sad part is I probably got the biggest catalog than every female in hip-hop. I have 22 albums. I'm looking for someone that can match that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, no, they might not all be all gold, you know, and platinum albums or, you know, as hype branded as the ones that have these corporate dollars behind them mm -hmm. that have been constructed, you know, for the system. Um, however, but there's longevity, there's longevity in this, there's consistency, and there's a well-rounded approach to my, you know, to my experience in the game of hip-hop and outside of hip-hop as right. a mogul, you know what I mean? Right. Early on um, in hip-hop, you were one of the females who came into the game and chose to be girly. Mm -hmm. You dressed girly, you were sexy, mm -hmm. curvy, provocative, whatever. Now hip-hop has a whole generation <laughs> um, it's almost like a female, she's not going to rap if she ain't going to partially, you know, reveal some things. How you feel about what, what it's turned into? Ooh. Well, you know what I'm going to tell you like this, hip-hop needs an auntie with some big mama game, and that'd be me. Okay. You know what I mean? It's pretty sad, you know. That's part of the reason why I stay inserted, because, you know, I'm sexy, you know, right now, but it's like, you know, having your whole breast... You know, covered with just your nipple and this whole breast out. It's like, I, I don't understand the element of how people can feel as comfortable. However, I did go through a stage like that at one point. You know, very brief stage. But it just didn't feel comfortable. Everybody feel like they want to lick me. And they're not even licking me in my face. And, you know, I guess because my breasts are real. And my body parts are real. And everything is so normal and natural to me. Um, I, it's not as exciting to me. And I think that... A lot of it comes from, you know, the women, one, being ignorant and not knowing the business, first right. and foremost, and not having enough sense to go after trying to learn from one of us aunties, you get right. what I'm saying? Um, and then, of course, the men wanting to take advantage of them and others enjoying the opportunity to probably cheat on their wife just by being able to look at it and not get in trouble. Right. Right. <laughs> to be honest with you, you got all these different agendas and you got the perverts and you got them that want to just be nasty to girls and they just want to be cuter than everybody and so they want to show that they got more than everybody. It's like, it's so much to it. It's like you can't answer that question in one sentence because, you know, it's like me from a um, from a coach standpoint, you know, because I'm a mobile maker, I'm a coach, right? Right. So, um, you know, and of course a coach has to be somebody experienced. So here we're talking 50 years in the game, you know, 50 being a new 30, right. two generations that I raised, not in music, but my own, you know, as a grandmother of a teenager, you know, a grandchild that's a teenager now and mothers right. in their 30s that are watching these girls in that age group doing the same thing um, is kind of scary. And at the same time, I'm looking at it like I can see where they're coming from somewhat and how they got lost into that. But it's really bad because I think that the industry needs to separate that. They need to have an right. X-rated industry, you know, for the people who want to go in that lane and stank up and, mm -hmm. you know, put their body booty and funk <laughs> up and, you know, do all that stuff and hump the air and do everything that is outside of music to me. Right. Because <laughs> to me, it's not music. It's right. just like, it's hard for me to pay attention to women who just naked and rapping like, Foxy Brown was the, one of the ladies who did it first, you know, kind of somewhat. But she seemed to have a lot more class, and she was talking about a whole bunch more. Right. And she wasn't just talking about what she'll do to a man. Like, this is a different change for me, like, to see women who just, like, make music. Or I'll lick you up, and I'll do It's like, I was so pimpish on mine, you know, moving through the process, through the years. I went through that little... Mo lots of sexy for a moment stage but it wasn't just like oh I'm gonna do this to you and I it's like it's just a different dynamic it's no class in it you know what I mean um, so I don't want to put these ladies down because I get that the ignorance of them not being exposed and the limited amount of auntie big mama games that they get to see and have that experience they get kind of stuck in the matrix of what they think and not really knowing what's available in the unknown you know what I mean so it's it, the, the, the answer to the question 
it's a lot of confusion. It's a lot of dynamics to it. And I think in the bottom line, they should be in a separate lane, to be honest with you. So the us that don't want to always just only do that, got so much more to talk about. And that can still keep you entertained, keep smashing, keep relevant, keep you ganged up in a way that's going to keep you healthy. Right. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, um, and entertained. We, need, we should be able to ride our lane and not just get kicked out like we're not relevant and then giving all the kudos to these that are not relevant because they're doing what we all did in the past, but now it's just an overkill of how they're doing it. Tell me how you came up with the name Sugar T. Um, you told me your name before, and you got a slick ass name. It's a one of a kind name. I never heard nobody. Can you can you pronounce it if you don't mind? Please. <laughs> I don't want people calling me it, but it start with a T. All right. Because <laughs> I don't want to be separated. Like, I don't want to buy, to the, you know. Right. Okay. And I'm like, who called me? You know. <laughs> and it's like, uh-oh, what I done done, you know. So, but yeah, um, I like my name. It came from my first name that starts with a T. And, the, and my brother actually gave me my name, Sugar T. Because I had an original group member. Her name is Spice. And she's still my best friend today. Okay. So we were called Sugar and Spice originally. Before I helped form the clique, we were MVP, Most Vicious Performers. Right. Um, so we were a family and a group of multiple groups of family members and, um, and you know, like family members right. connected and separated in different groups and segments. So we had a group called Sugar and Spice. And one of the albums that um, that we wanted a single, uh, single that we released was called um, um, Biker Season. And it was me, and it had that Jamaican Jamaican funk beat. Dun, 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 you know. Right. So it was rocking. We was talking about biker season when we all was wearing biker shorts. So Sugar and Spice, which was my best friend at the time, still my best friend, but we rapped together. So we got separated when we both ended up getting pregnant. And right. she decided to be more domestic. I decided to continue with music right. and be domestic at the same time. So when I did that and I got a little free, it kept me out of trouble by continuing to pursue music because I started going in other directions, um, you know, that was a little more risky. And my brother was like, you need to come with us. And so I was like, okay, well, let's do this. And we ended up making the group The Click. Okay, so prior to The Click mm -hmm. and prior to you being appearing on Sprinkle Me, you wasn't, it wasn't a situation like, we need a cute girl, I'm gonna put my sister in it. You was really, really mm -hmm. on your shit. Yeah. That's real. Sugar and spice. Yep. Okay. Sugar and spice. So, so it wasn't like I just jumped in it. And before that, I was the singer. I sang music and.